Hey everyone, welcome to going back number 13, which is a follow-up to my pulling the trigger theory and explanation video, which pretty much means that there wouldn't be much of a point in watching this if you haven't already seen that one. So if you would like to watch that for the first time or just go back and revisit it, I'll link that here. And as always, I apologize for any mispronunciations of these usernames that I'll be reading off. But with that out of the way, let's dive in. Like with Shannon, Saeed can't bear accepting that what happened to Nadia was a senseless accident. Because to do so would be to accept there's nothing he can do to make it right. So Saeed takes the path of revenge that Ben offers him, almost certainly knowing on some level that it's a lie. So this first comment that I wanted to get into is from user Chokas. And it is essentially his own interpretation of why Nadia was killed. I think that Ishmael Bakir did kill Nadia, but that it was for personal reasons. I think it was an interesting casting choice to go with a Middle Eastern actor with an Arabic name. Ishmael being a very important figure in Islam too, being an ancestor to Muhammad. Nadia was marked as a traitor to her country and questioned about the bombing of the Iraqi city of Najif one of the holiest cities in Islam. For all we know, Bakir could have had relatives there that are dead because of her. I like this one the best. But some other options are that he was avenging Omar, the man that Saeed killed in the Republican Guard before letting Nadia escape. Or it could be that Ishmael and Nadia both worked at Widmore Industries in London in the 90s since she was outside that building and came to a disagreement with someone. But I think that could be a stretch. So yeah, I wanted to share that just in case any of those alternative theories um, appealed to anybody else. There's certainly more than enough that we don't know regarding Ishmael Bakir and regarding whoever hit Nadia that we as individual audience members can kind of come up with our own satisfying backstory there. And in Shokasa's case, there's nothing that he puts forth that I would say, no, that can't be the case. Or that I would point to and say, hey, that's wrong. Now that said, I feel like this is a good opportunity for me to perhaps clarify what my perspective on Bakir and that whole situation is. As well as further explain why it is that I personally prefer the idea that Nadia's death was just an accident. But let me start with Bakir. I do believe that he was working for Widmore, and I do believe the job he was performing was keeping tabs on Saeed while he was in Iraq. I do not necessarily think that he was keeping tabs on Saeed in Los Angeles. If Widmore was having Saeed followed or you know keeping an eye on him in LA, which I would agree is likely, I don't necessarily think that it would be the same man. Like, I don't think he has one guy just following Saeed around the world. In my head, characters like Widmore and Ben have agents placed all around the world, embedded in everyday life. For example, Jill working at the butcher shop. And that's kind of how I see Ishmael. I do think that he is employed by Widmore, but I think he is stationed in Iraq or in the Middle East region. And so when Saeed arrives for the funeral, it's Ishmael that is tasked with keeping an eye on him. Now, I do think there are a couple of things that heavily suggest Ishmael did in fact work for Widmore. The first being that when Ben says that he wants him to deliver a message to Charles Widmore, Ishmael does not appear confused and instead just asks what message. And the other is his reaction to the name Benjamin Linus. The way I perceive that is that he recognizes the name. My name is Benjamin Linus. And I need you to take a message to Mr. Widmore for me. And what message is that? Now, as for the idea that he or anyone else would have intentionally killed Nadia for reasons that have nothing to do with the story presented in Lost... I personally don't find that nearly as interesting. Now on the surface, the idea that her death was just an accident may also seem uninteresting or kind of besides the point. 
the way I've just suggested her being killed for other reasons would be. But I would definitely argue otherwise. As I talk about a lot, I feel that the way characters project meaning onto things is a huge theme of this show. And as I talk about in this video, in the case of the character of Saeed specifically, I feel this need to blame and punish is a huge part of his arc. And for me, this idea that her death was an accident and that most rational people would conclude that it was an accident makes Saeed's decision to just accept Ben's unlikely explanation for things all the more poignant and tragic. Whereas if Nadia had legitimately been murdered, but just for other reasons completely unrelated to the island, etc., I just kind of feel like that would undercut and distract from what I see as the tragedy of the situation. Granted, it would still be tragic if Saeed is killing the wrong people, but for me, that's not as interesting as the idea that Saeed shouldn't be killing anyone. And that's what I think the idea that Nadia was killed by somebody else would distract from. Now, obviously, all of that's just my subjective feelings on the matter. And by all means, if Chokas or anyone else prefers a different interpretation that isn't contradicted by the facts, by all means. And I would agree that nothing Chokas puts forth in that comment is outright contradicted by facts. And this is ultimately why I think Saeed is so upset when Ben is finished using him. You're done. What do you mean I'm done? We're done. So that's it? I killed all those people for you. And now you're just walking away? This next comment comes from JewelTom10630, who says, Any thoughts about who Andropov was and what he was doing for Widmore? This is the man that Ben said was last on the list. Also, who do you think The Economist was? Could he have been Widmore? Sad we never got confirmation about that in the show. It would be great to hear your theory about these things. So starting with Andropov, I think him and Peter Avellino and The Economist and pretty much everybody that Ben has Saeed kill are essentially just people high up in Widmore's organization. And were each integral parts of managing his business interests, which would likely include the shadier aspects of his resources. For example, everything that went into staging the fake 815 wreckage, the amount of money it took to discreetly buy the plane, come up with all those dead bodies, transport all of that out to the Sunda Trench. This would absolutely have required there to have been a number of people in on it. And I think these are the people that Ben is sending Saeed after. Now, obviously, The Economist isn't present in Germany most of the time, based on the fact that Elsa says he only comes to town every once in a while, and that's why Saeed kind of has to wait around. So this suggests the possibility that he's actually not German in origin and that Germany is just one of the many places he visits and he has Elsa positioned there for when he comes to town. But the reason I think he probably actually is German is the fact that when Elsa talks to someone on the phone, they speak in German. Now, it's certainly possible that that's not The Economist himself, but another employee of The Economist. But I don't know. I've just always had the impression that she is speaking to her boss there. So yeah, these days I'm pretty much of the opinion that The Economist isn't anybody that we ever see on screen and that he isn't really important other than him being someone else within Widmore's inner circle. In fact, the way that Ben dismisses Saeed in Russia, he's telling Saeed that they got everyone and that their work is finished which I feel like suggests they did end up getting The Economist eventually. Now, obviously, everything I've already said indicates that I don't think The Economist was Widmore. But to go even further with that, as I said in my last follow-up video, I don't think Ben ever had any intention of sending Saeed after Widmore himself. 
I think there are a number of reasons that Ben didn't do this, but I think the main one is that Ben doesn't just want Charles dead. He wants him to suffer. And more specifically, he wants him to lose his daughter the way Charles caused Ben to lose his. So no, I don't think Ben ever would have sent Saeed after Widmore. Certainly not before Penny had already been killed. Now I do realize that my answer to who I think The Economist was isn't exactly fun. So I will put forth the theory that I've always found the most interesting, even though I don't ultimately think it is the case. And that is that The Economist was Son's father. There are a handful of things that suggest that Charles Widmore and Son's father, as well as their companies, were connected to some degree. And therefore, I've always found it very plausible that Son's father would have ended up on Saeed's list at some point. And that, of course, would have been an interesting situation to see play out on screen. And honestly, even though I don't think he was the economist, in my own head canon, I do actually think that this happened. Something I always felt should have been explained in the show was how Sun came to blame Ben for what she believed was Jin's death. We, the audience, know that when Ben killed Kimi, he was knowingly setting off the bomb on the freighter and therefore is largely responsible for killing everyone that died on the freighter. And obviously Sun believes Jin is one of those people, as did we for a certain amount of time. The problem is that the only person that knew that Ben is the one that caused this was Locke. And we know that Locke never communicated with Sun after this happened. So in my head canon, at some point during the two years that Saeed was working with Ben, I think Ben confided what he did in Saeed. Likely in a conversation I can absolutely see the two of them having about their desire for revenge and the collateral damage that comes with that. And then once Ben sends Saeed after Sun's father, I think it makes sense that Saeed would be a bit conflicted about killing his friend's father, and I think he ended up communicating with Sun about what he was sent to do. And I think by the end of that interaction with Sun, Saeed felt obligated to share with her what he knew about Ben's role in Jin's supposed death. And as far as Sun's father goes, I think more than likely Saeed did not kill him, based on the fact that Widmore asks Sun in London about her father, and she responds that he's excellent. And while that could just be her dismissing and moving past that irrelevant question, the fact that Charles asked that at all tells us that, at least as far as the general public knows, her dad is still alive. So yeah, again, according to my headcanon, I think Saeed was sent after him, but I don't think that he killed him. And I think the reason Ben was okay with letting that one go is the fact that Sun had taken control of the company. And therefore, he had already been deposed of that position, and he was no longer an asset to Widmore. And so killing him probably wouldn't have served any real purpose. I know that was a bit of a tangent, but I figured since I didn't really have an interesting theory about The Economist, maybe you guys would find my thoughts on that a bit more interesting. He ignores the reality that there's zero evidence any of the others, let alone Henry specifically, had anything to do with Shannon's death. In fact, we know they really didn't. So this next comment comes from Brady And, who says, I'm going to have to disagree with you about Shannon's death. Saeed was right to blame the others, and Ben specifically when he was posing as Henry Gale. Anna Lucia and the Tailies were only on high alert because everyone in their camp had been taken and they were being attacked every night. That was the point Saeed was making when he said the others killed Shannon. They were responsible for her death. They created the environment for Anna Lucia to pull the trigger. So yeah, I don't actually say in this video that Saeed was wrong to blame the others for Shannon's death. Now what I do say is that Saeed blames Ben without any actual evidence that he was involved in Shannon's death. And that we actually know he didn't have any involvement. 
And yes, I will concede that there is a bit of an implication there that Saeed is wrong for seeking vengeance upon Ben for her death. And so here's kind of where I'm coming from with that. Neither Ben nor his people intended to kill Shannon or intended to get her killed. Nothing they were doing was with the intent to murder her. And aside from perhaps Cindy's disappearance, there really isn't anything to suggest they were even present at the scene of Shannon's death. And without going on that tangent, I did want to note that I think something else was going on with Cindy's disappearance. Anyways, I would argue that in a court of law, Ben and his people would not be found responsible for the death of Shannon. But when I say that, I'm not also saying that from a moral, ethical perspective, they don't share some blame. This is yet another subjective element to the story. Do the others and the way that they terrorized the Tailies deserve some of the blame for Shannon's death? That's for each of us as individuals to consider. I think I would agree that they do, but this notion of blame is one of the many philosophical notions that the show confronts us with. Is it just the person that pulled the trigger that is to blame? Or does it extend to the people that made her so frightened that she ended up pulling that trigger? Should it then extend to the people that have made the others so defensive of the island? Namely, Widmore and his people. And if we do extend the blame to Widmore for all of the awful choices he's made that have harmed so many people, then do we extend the blame to whoever brought him up? for raising a child that turned out to be a pretty terrible human being. And on and on it goes. At what point do we stop assigning blame? These types of questions do not have right and wrong answers. And yet, that's exactly what makes them the questions most worth considering. So to wrap that up, the point I was making in this video was not that Saeed was wrong for blaming the others for Shannon's death, but rather that his pattern of behavior, of needing to have someone to punish, which let's face it, in Saeed's case, typically means kill, is a serious character flaw, and one that Ben later exploits. Now, I feel like that's a pretty good place to transition into addressing a comment I got somewhat recently. I'm not going to put this comment on screen because it comes from someone that has just recently started posting comments on my videos. And so far, each of these comments seem pretty trollish. By which I mean they don't seem to have actually watched the video before commenting. And they come across as being very argumentative just for the sake of being argumentative. So for those reasons, I don't want to call attention to this user. But on the off chance that multiple people that watched this video somehow got the impression that I was saying something that I wasn't trying to say, I thought I would briefly address this comment. Basically, they take a pretty aggressive stance that Ben's manipulation of Saeed doesn't absolve Saeed of any wrongdoing. And the reason I wanted to address that is because I agree. And having just rewatched this video, I can safely say that there's nothing in this video where I suggest that's the case. Or at least I don't feel like there is. But again, just in case there is anybody else out there that I somehow gave that impression to, I want to be clear that my point was essentially the opposite. I do feel that it was wrong for Saeed to need someone to blame, to give in to that need, and to be so easily manipulated by Ben. In fact, in the video, I even state that I believe Saeed knew on some level that Ben was lying to him. But he so badly needed to believe it that he chose to. And in no way, shape, or form was I trying to argue that it was okay for Saeed to do that. But alright, I think that's everything that I have for today. My next video will not be a follow-up, but an actual theory and explanation video. And that should be up a week from when this is coming out. And after that, I'm going to start releasing videos every other week. I had a bit of a head start there for a while, which allowed me to release videos once a week. 
But as I said, when that first started happening, I knew that wasn't going to last forever. These videos are just too much work for that to be sustainable for me, at least not at this time. But I think releasing one every other week will be much more sustainable. So that's my plan going forward. But if you haven't already, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified whenever a new video comes out. As always, I hope you guys come back for those future videos. Oh, you're still here. Hopefully that means you enjoyed this video. If so, please consider sticking around and being a constant for this channel by clicking right up here to subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell icon if you would like to be notified when more videos like this one arrive. In the meantime, feel free to check out previous content from this channel by clicking here or here. Oh no. Please subscribe.